Hello everyone and welcome back to the final episode of Death Trap Dungeon. When we last left off, the the final door, the exit door, uh, gate rather, to of this dungeon has opened. And all we need to do is test our luck one final time, hopefully, to uh, escape, to avoid inhaling the the green gas that uh, the gnome uh, threw at us. And uh, our luck is very low. It's at six, but believe it or not, that still means that we have a chance. Uh, uh, we have a relatively high chance of success, over forty percent. So let's see if it works out. And we got lucky. All right. Covering our nose and mouth with our hand to avoid breathing in the gas, we follow the gnome through the open door. We enter another tunnel at the end of which is the welcome sight of daylight, finally. Much to our surprise, we see the gnome lying dead halfway down the tunnel. A crossbow bolt protrudes from the side of his head. The gnome, in his bid for freedom, has fallen foul of Baron Sukumvit's final trap. We walk past him and out into brilliant sunshine. Alright, so it seems that that this nice Baron had one final uh, trick up, its, up his sleeve, but the gnome, who was probably imprisoned here like all the other trial masters, uh, triggered it for us, and we get to turn to 400, so we have won. Finally, but before we go to the uh, final entry, let's review our character and our adventure. So, we badly survived, we are very badly beaten and bruised. Uh, we got very lucky in the final battles and in this luck, luck roll as well, so... Um, yeah, so it was actually unlikely that we survive and win, so we got lucky. We have 10 plus 1 skill points out of a possible of 11 plus 1. So if we could manage to regain that one, we would have gained, you know, two skill points during our adventure. And uh, once we get our luck back to max, it would be 14. We finish with the current stat of 5, so it's we, we've used up a lot of our luck points. Uh, we, st we haven't managed to find any, any new sword or better sword or any shield whatsoever, but we have picked up a dwarven chainmail of the corpse of the, the trial master from the arena of death. And uh, we leave with two gold pieces. I don't think we're that uh, rich, but you know, gold is gold. Uh, we got three altogether and uh, we managed to obtain three gold pieces altogether and, and we spent one. Alright, we learned a lot of interesting and less interesting uh, things and we have obtained a huge amount of items wow it doesn't even fit in one on one page so uh, i'm not going to read them out to you some of them are um, um, precious gems we never needed that blood blood red ruby orb which we fell down uh, down in the chasm for but whatever and this doppelganger potion is supposed to be a one-time use only, but we're still holding on to it for some reason. But we picked up a whole lot of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, I think. Um, let's take a look at our adventure real quick. So, wow, this is gigantic. Let me... <laughs> this was a huge adventure. Uh, we started out from the village of Fang, if you recall. We took the eastern path. And we met the first uh, rival here. The barbarian's corpse. And we got the first jewel from the jewel-eyed idol, if you recall. Alright. We fought the rock grub, but we avoided uh, interacting with the large mirror. We found the the ragged old man, the one that's in the uh, that was in the imprisoned. I think that's the one. All right, no, no, that's that's the chained man that was imprisoned, the the, the door with the withered hand. We met from the barbarian. Oh yeah, the old man, the crazy old man, was the one where we met the the knights uh, 
statue or corpse or whatever. The, he's the one that turns people into statues. We met Throm, the barbarian, our trusty friend, and we've had quite a few uh, adventures together, including uh, meeting the trial master dwarf. And we had to fight against Throm and kill him. We disposed of the dwarf afterwards, uh, like just like we swore to avenge Throm for his demise. All right. Uh, we swam in the deep pool below a wall, if you recall. We met the elf as well. So uh, that was number four of our competitors, of, our cont of the other contestants. She, she was dying by the time we rescued her. Yep. And we met, if you recall, we met the basket man and poison ivy, the troll who we knocked out. I don't think we killed her. No need for that. Anyway, we met the ninja, the final rival, and after uh, he attacked us, we killed him. Then the blood beast, the manticore, and trial master Igbud, the gnome. And now we have won. Quite an adventure, I would say. So we walk past the, the dead corpse of Igbud, the gnome, and out into brilliant sunshine. Let's see what our reward is. As soon as we appear at the tunnel exit, a large crowd of people begins to cheer and shout. We walk down a path lined with jubilant people towards a small rostrum and there, sitting under a colorful bamboo umbrella, is Baron Sukumvit. He looks astonished, as if he never expected anybody to come through his death trap dungeon alive. Now the secret of Fang is known. As the Baron rises from his chair, we climb the steps to the rostrum, bow down, bow down before him, and watch as his cold eyes stare at us in utter disbelief. We smile grimly as he offers us his outstretched hand. To the deafening noise of the cheering people of Fang, Baron Sukumvit opens the chest containing our prize of 10,000 gold pieces. Then he places a laurel crown on our head and proclaims us the champion of Death Trap Dungeon. Alright, seems that we are going home with 10,002 gold pieces. That's awesome. Uh, I guess that that's going to be to have to be sufficient for our, <laughs> for our uh, recuperation because we are really half dead practically with four stamina points left. So uh, we definitely need a good bath, uh, a good doctor, some good medicine, and a lot of rest after this huge adventure. All right, that was the adventure, the end. I'm very happy the way it turned out. We got lucky, everything went according to plan. So this is it. All right, a few words about the book itself. Um, and as you can see, this is the, the Blood Beast, although if, if it really looked like this, then it would be quite easy to figure out which one is its real eye, which ones are its real two eyes. I mean, then these, f uh, these decoy eyes w w wouldn't really work that well. So anyway, um, I've read somewhere that Death Trap Dungeon is the most popular book in the series and I don't know if it's based on on sales figures or if it's based on review scores or whatever but um, it's definitely not my favorite of the ones that we have played uh, I think book number two uh, the Citadel of Chaos and especially book number five the City of Thieves are far better the City of Thieves is 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 better I is the best that we have played so far it's an amazing uh, adventure an amazing book overall um, what I really dislike about this one is the, the main quest itself, so the background and our character. So this is a really silly idea for a dungeon and it's, it's, it's a, it's, it sounds like a cheap way of getting us into an adventure. You know, here is that, that, uh, the dungeon that nobody has ever mastered and go in go in and and try to survive and get out of the exit and it's it's kind of stupid you know if you think about it they could just you know poison people after the second turn and they would guarantee that that they could never come out the the whole place doesn't make much sense 
in in what I mean by that is that it's maintained obviously by slaves. Even the trial masters are are uh, prisoners there. So it's um, so resources go into maintaining this this um, elaborate dungeon. But sometimes it it felt very chaotic for that. So it's not automated, but it's it also doesn't doesn't it doesn't feel realistic. That's it. It yeah, my my suspension of disbelief was broken a few times. That wasn't the case with Citadel of Chaos or with the City of Thieves because there the places themselves, the settings are totally believable or at least the vast majority of times. You know, the, the layouts are, are okay. Uh, what you see and what you, what you encounter are, are just, you know, believable. That's the word. They are, they, you, can, you can absolutely uh, feel that there is they are not out of place. So why does this book have uh, such a good reputation? Well, I guess the answer is its difficulty. All five previous books are extremely easy, especially with uh, optimum on using the optimum path. Um, Starship Traveler is, is notoriously easy if you know what you're doing. You really only need to perform one skill uh, attribute test, uh, and you don't need to touch the dice ever again, basically. Um, and also the book number two, the, the Citadel of Chaos, is also very easy. You don't need high stats. If you know what you're doing, you can you can uh, complete the game after one easy battle with one easy battle and never have to perform any attribute tests. Um, but even if you if you don't know what you're really doing, then um, the books are not hard at all previously. So. You can bumble about, it's relatively rare that you will die, especially to I in a battle, you know. And here, that's not the case. This book was clearly designed for a character with maximum attributes, so 24 stamina and uh, 12 skill and uh, luck point each, by attributes starting out. And, uh, and also, this is the first book where I think that the designer was was intent on on having us use having the player use um, provisions portions of provisions so we start out with 10 uh, you lose two if you swim under the the uh, wall and uh, y this is inevitable if you if you want the um, the good ending so um, but overall you wouldn't lose more but you would have to consume a ton of them to get through it so we got very lucky we are started out with three and our very first or rather the second battle turned out very unlucky as well so the point is that in this book it's clear that that it's not a pushover you can bleed out in this one which is practically impossible with the earlier uh, books so i g think that's that's why this book is so popular because it actually uh, provides a, a a real challenge a very tough challenge this is a very very difficult book you're not going to get through it on the first try unfortunately at the end uh, at the end of it all in the end it it basically boils down to um, to um, to um, to have you having together the correct items, the correct gems this time, but this is a megafin, so um, so it's just artifact artifact collection practically. And there are very few items or areas which help you out, which heal you or grant you boni bonuses. So um, so even though the the challenge is great, uh, even that I couldn't enjoy in in this run or if you play on hardcore hero because this book was clearly not designed for hardcore hero difficulty. It's really a a tough one if you try to play it like that. So overall, I think that that the a lot of lot of the parts of the dungeon uh, are really well done, well designed. They're creepy, they're they're uh, spooky, and you know it's just well written. So the dungeon itself can uh, sometimes um, catch your attention and you can get immersed, but. Uh, Overall, on this difficulty setting, I don't think it's very highly enjoyable. And uh, on, a, on standard adventure difficulty, it's better. It presents you with a really tough challenge, but uh, one that you can complete. And by the way, we, we've seen around 80% of the book, I would say. Uh, there are a few parallel paths, but we only took the ones that... So we, we had to select the paths in order to win. Uh, so... Mm, 
basically uh, if you choose any other pathway then you are not going to be able to exit the dungeon and you will just die uh, at the final gate, exit gate. So yeah, um, and there are a lot also a lot of insta deaths uh, here as well. So it's it's a really tough challenge. Um, if this if uh, this is up your alley, then you would enjoy it. If you don't mind about the background story and the, our character who just comes from a random village, is a random village idiot that wants to uh, finish this dungeon because you know exit the dungeon because nobody else has. That's kind of stupid. Um, but if, if you don't mind that, if you're just looking for a fun uh, but difficult, challenging dungeon adventure, then this might very well uh, do the trick for you. So um, I recommend trying it out. Uh, be prepared for a, for a really difficult experience. Um, but other than that, it's well written. It's uh, sometimes thought-provoking. It's, uh, it's, it's a good book. Not the best, but definitely one that's, that deserves attention. I sti I'm still going to say that so far, book number five, City of S Thieves, is uh, by far the best book um, that we have played through. So this doesn't even come close as a second, I would say. But anyway, it's, it's not a uh, throwaway, so definitely try it out if you get the, the chance to do so. And that's it. All that's left to do is for me to thank you for joining me on this adventure. This was by far our, our longest adventure. And uh, I, hope I really hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope that you will join me on the next one as well. Bye-bye.